This, folks, is a top 10 turntable list. And if you want to skip straight to the hardware, then you can. You can click the chapter headings below in the description. But if you do, you might be a bit confused as to what's going on. So if you do want to know what's happening and why, then please stick around. Now, look, as you very well know, there's lots happening in the world right now, but one of the prime topics of conversation is cash, money, and the fact that there's not a lot of it going around right now. There's concerns about fuel bills, tax increases, cuts in services. Well, there is in the UK at any rate. And then to cap it all, what happens? Well, Muggins here cheerfully skips into view at the end of the week, telling you the hi-fi news about these great 10k speakers. Amazing. Hey. Well, look, you and I both know that there are hi-fi fans out there where money is never really an issue. And they are very lucky people indeed. Saying that, there's also plenty of hi-fi users out there where money and the lack of the same is at the forefront of their minds. And I'm one of those. So this video will focus on that money. Oh, and turntables. So what you've got here is a top 10, but a top 10 that's actually useful instead of being a bit of a laugh. Most hi-fi top 10s give you the big countdown, which infers that the only worthwhile table in the whole list is the one sitting at number one. What if you can't afford the number one turntable? What then? What if the number one turntable doesn't give you everything you need from the design? What if, well, I'm sure you get the general idea. So this top 10 turntable list is geared around money. Each turntable in this list is recommended in its price sector. Saying that, generally speaking, if you want better sound, more features, a slicker interface, better build and parts quality, then sure, grab one of the more expensive turntables in this list. But if your budget is tight, then choose the design for you that best suits you and your wallet or your purse. This list begins at number 10 with the cheapest turntable and ends at number one with the most expensive. The limit for this top 10? Well, no higher than £500. And actually, it's a bit less than that. To repeat, every design here is recommended. The only thing separating them basically is price. As for manufacturers, well, I've introduced a rule or two. So some brands specialize in lower cost turntables, but in this list, each company is limited to a maximum of three models each. Finally, this list is limited to those I can vouch for. For example, I'm fully aware of the U-turn range, but I've only ever seen that advertised in the USA. I can't grab them here, so they're not in this list because I have no experience of them. I'll put contacts down in the description below. So here we go then. First up is the Audio Technica Sound Burger, priced at £200, and this one has only just been issued. Now, here's a lively start then, because some of you will be exclaiming, have you gone mad? Are you seriously recommending this, this toy as a top 10 turntable? Well, yeah, yes I am, and really, in my opinion, it's not a toy. Well, actually, I'm assuming it's not a toy because, well, I haven't actually seen one in the flesh yet. Not the new one. The new one, apparently, can't stop selling. They produced a first batch, and that actually sold out in about five minutes. I have talked to Audio Technica because I actually want to review one of these things, and I have been told that I will have to wait at least until next year. But 
I have my name down. So what I'm basing my opinion on is the original model. And apparently the new version is very similar. There's one or two differences. There is Bluetooth on the new one, but no headphone amplifier on the old one. There's no Bluetooth. As you might expect, this is an AC's design, the original one anyway, but there is a headphone amplifier in the original. So there's a couple of differences, but generally speaking, it's the same thing. And I thought the original one, for what it was and how it presented itself, was pretty good, actually. Now, don't forget, this is a luggable all-in-one. Audio-Technica call it a portable. It is not a portable. It is a luggable. And you have to treat this sound burger with the same care and attention as you would with any turntable. You can't be throwing this thing around. You have to cite it correctly. You have to give it isolation. You have to treat it with respect. And it'll give back. Basically, this is not strictly a turntable per se. It's more of a, well, it's more of an all-in-one. So you get a turntable, yes, but you also get an amplifier and you get a Bluetooth module in the latest one. And yes, there's a decent build quality for the price. There's an innovative design. And from the reports I'm getting, because one or two of my contacts have got them, darn them, but they have before me, well, they say the sound is rather nice. The sound burger is perfect for those with no room for a basic hi-fi system. You basically get your turntable, your amplifier, and your Bluetooth all squashed into a tiny little chassis for £200. You add your speakers, and you're away. When you're finished, you can wrap everything back up into a small little container, stick it in the cupboard, and you're sorted. Perfect for those living in a bedsit or in a house with lots and lots of clutter, and I know what that's all about, or in a small bedroom, a second system maybe, anywhere. Next up, we're looking at a turntable from Project. Now, this one is priced at £199, but this is a pure turntable. There's no amplifier or Bluetooth module involved here. So if you're looking for a pure turntable, then this design from Project should fit the bill. This is a basic turntable and it feels like a basic turntable in use. But even so, it performs remarkably well for the price. Now, I haven't reviewed this latest E variant, but I did review the earlier primary. It was just called the primary as opposed to the primary E. And I reviewed that on my website. So I'll put a link below. And I loved it to bits. Sure, the base focus wasn't quite the best in the world, but the mid range was excellent. Lots of air around the soundstage and so on. This latest E version actually improves the motor and does away with the earlier model's internal processing for that earlier motor. To me, the new model promises a lower noise floor, but I haven't heard that so can't confirm. This is one of the few turntables currently being sold on the market at or under £200 that actually focuses on the sound quality first and foremost. Next up, we're looking at Lenko. Number three in our list is the Lenko L3809, priced at £185. Now, I've seen one of these selling online for around £250, but the, the 185 figure, well, I saw that on Amazon. So my advice, shop around. Now, get this one if you want a solid build, a direct drive motor, an easy-to-use interface, and something a little bit more well, a bit more robust than the primary E. You get that Technics chic, a hot swappable head shell, 
and the sound is excellent. Maybe not quite as cultured as the primary E, perhaps, but it's a surprisingly good performer nevertheless. The design of this Lenko is very compact as well, which will help those who need a smaller footprint. Number four, we've got another one from Audio Technica. In this case, we're looking at the AT-LP120X USB. Now, 120X, I emphasize the X bit, not the earlier 120, which was fine, but there was a few issues concerning the phono amplifier on that one. Now, the 120X is what I'm looking at here, and we're looking at a price of £245. In terms of performance, well, imagine the Lenko, but with better sound quality, basically. This is a three-speed design that arrives with the best cartridge featured in this list so far, the Audio-Technica VM95E, which I personally rate very highly indeed. It outperforms the earlier AT95E. I happen to like the felt platter mat on the 120X, which actually sounds much better than the usual cheapo rubber freebie rubbish. You also get a built-in phono amplifier and a supplied USB port for ripping. What the 120X has that the Lenko does not is attention to detail in terms of parts quality and build quality, and it shows. Tonal realism is also excellent for the price. I played one or two little classical bits, and the crunch and aggression from the cellos, for example, are more in evidence on the 120X than the Lenko, for example, while the expanded soundstage roaming left and right creates an epic delivery from the likes of guitars, drums, and bass guitars. The entire organic flow from the 120X is naturalistic and at ease. Turn table number five in our list is from Fluence. It's the RT81, priced over here in the UK at £272. Now, if you want a better build quality with better parts quality, and yet you want to retain sound quality, then spend a bit more for the RT81. Arriving with a big, solid wooden plinth, the RT81 gives you a very nice, Audio Technica AT95E with an elliptical stylus tip. The VM would have been better, but the AT is fine for now. The RT81 includes an optional auto off feature that kills the power when the record ends. So the stylus, well, it sits there in the groove when the record is finished. As I say though, that is optional. You can turn off that particular feature at the rear of the turntable. During my review of the RT81, I noted the excellent bass performance of this turntable, which means power from string sections, presence from lead guitars, big drum sounds, and so on. In many ways, the resultant sounds offers a sort of classic 70s-like presentation, slightly golden upper frequencies with big, bold lower end. Number six, we have the Riga Planner 1, priced at £299. Like the Project Primary E, the Riga Planner 1 focuses on sound and only sound, and dumps any pretense about ease of use, features, and facilities. 
It's the Oliver Cromwell of turntables. Puritan in its beliefs, sound is all. So there's a sparsity of knobs and switches and flashing lights. Any part not contributing directly to sound is dumped. For example, there's no speed change button or switch. You change the speed by moving the actual belt from one notch on the pulley to another notch. Now, the actual operation to do this only takes a moment, but some people, well, some people just don't like to do that kind of thing. And if that's you, then the Riga Planner 1 is probably not for you. Then again, if sound is paramount, then grab a Planner 1 for no other reason than the excellent tone arm, which may be the best tone arm in this entire listing. At number, where are we? Seven? I think it's seven. And number seven, I think, is the Project A1, priced at £299. Now, the A1 is really the antithesis of the Riga Planner 1. The A1 is all about facilities and features and ease of use and taking you away from the whole hi fi ethos, the whole hi fi bubble. The A1 is the only full automatic turntable design in this list. It's fully automatic, so you flick a single switch, and the A1 places the tone arm on the record, and when the record is completed, it lifts the tone arm off the record and sends it back to the cradle and turns itself off. The A1 is for non-hi-fi people who have better things to do with their lives the messing around with all of the minutiae that the likes of myself obsess about. In terms of sound quality, it's not the best sounding turntable in this list. Saying that, if you just look at automatic turntables, well, it's one of the best sounding automatics I've heard of late. So, in its class, it's a stormer. At number 8, at £325, we have another Audio-Technica. This is the LP5X. The three-speed LP5X is the first turntable in the Audio-Technica range so far to, well, to get serious. It's the first turntable that thinks about sound quality and then everything else. It's not as puritanical as the Riga Planner 1 because... The LP5X offers plenty of features to ease your way along the record playing process, including a built-in phono amplifier and a USB port for that vinyl ripping. But there's no platter strobe, there's no pitch slider, there's no DJ light. Instead, you get a very nice quality head shell. You get an excellent VM95E cartridge you also get a decent power supply. Now, I was impressed by the sound quality from the LP5X, which is a couple of rungs higher than the 120X. And while I'm talking about Audio-Technica, if I brought in, say, the Audio-Technica 140, which is a bit more DJ-centric, I might say, the LP5X may not have the punch of the 140, although the LP5X still has... Very nice bass indeed. There's nothing wrong with the 5X's bass. It does score the 5X in terms of mid-range finesse and also a lower noise floor. An excellent turntable all round.
Now at number nine, we have the second turntable from Fluence. This is the RT83, priced at £420. Basically, this is an RT81 and then some. This is a belt-driven design with speed controlled by a dual power speed control knob on the near left of the plinth. That plinth supports an included dust cover and it's, well, it's wooden with a walnut veneer. You also get a very nice 2M red cartridge, which is worth, well, somewhere around £95 all on its own. And yes, the RT83 also includes that auto-off feature I mentioned earlier with the 81. Sound-wise, well, compared to the 81, the 83 offers far more subtlety in terms of overall sound presentation. You get big bass too, and focused bass as well. Again, superior in presentation to the 81. Sound isn't really up to the Riga Planner 1 standards, but you don't buy an 83 if sound is your only priority. The 83 offers a confident sound, but also you get that semi-automatic-ish feature and other features like the hot swappable head shell and the easy to use controls. Which leaves our final entrant in this top 10 and it's from Project, it's the debut Evo, priced at £449. And it's, well, it's a pretty remarkable design. And it's a design that really surprised me when it was initially released. Firstly, it offered a good build quality. Then the parts quality was up there as well, including the carbon fibre tone arm, for example. There's also plenty of anti-vibration bits and bobs to lower the noise floor here. Then there's that basic sound quality, which surpassed the Riga Planner 1 for detail extraction and the LP5X for dynamic reach around the upper frequencies. It even gives the Riga Planner 3 a run for its money, where, even though the Riga Planner 3 offers superior mid-range performance. The Evo provides a greater overall tonal balance. More than that, the Evo is supremely upgradable. If and when you have the cash, you can slowly transform the Evo into something else entirely, eventually turning itself into a £1,000 plus beast of a turntable. So there is plenty of scope for upgrades with this one. And that's the list. That's my top 10 turntable list based upon price and performance. Each offers pros and cons, as you might expect, in terms of sound and features. But every design here is worthy of your attention. Give me a shout down in the comments if you need to know more, and I'd be glad to help. Before you go, if you could do me a favor and click on the like and subscribe buttons down below, just keeps this channel growing. Also, there are links in the description further downstairs for my website, and there's all kinds of stuff on there that doesn't appear over here, and also my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. Check out my Patreon, which now serves as a hub. All of my work appears on Patreon now, whether that means the website, YouTube, other unique social media posts, it all appears on Patreon. Also, there are exclusive videos, buyers guides, text features, all kinds of stuff. It's all there on Patreon. It's accumulating quite a lot of content, I must say. Now, Hi-Fi News Etc. is back, and that will be on Friday. So I hope to see you there. Hope to have your company. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.